Um, uh, do you believe that you just needed to, to finish that question? You need to, tan of x is equal to root three over three, right? Not root three. Oh yeah, I could have gotten that. So if you get to this, yeah. that's not in that form. You're, you're, you don't quite understand what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Kind of right. So let's just make a triangle here. Tangent is inverse opposite tangent over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So that's root three over three. Three, correct? I tried to think about that in my head. Okay, root three over three. That's nice. Okay, what's the hypotenuse of that triangle? Um, 9 plus 3 is root what? 12. Root 12. Do you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. What's root 12? Root 4. So it's 2 what? 2 root 3. Now, we generally like it when the hypotenuse is what? Not that. Not that, when it's what? One. So let's divide each of the side lengths by 2 root 3. So it's going to be 1 root 3 over 2 root 3, two root three and 3 over Two root, three. two root three, right? You got that? Yeah. So what does that turn into? It turns into one, one half, and you multiply this by root three, three over, over th root three, like that, and you end up with three root three over six, which is root three over two. So what angle measure is that? 30 degrees, <laughs> or pi over six, yeah. Wah! Oh, Boom! Oh, I took a wild guess. I said, <laughs> I wanna, there's too many wrong ways to do it. Okay, first of all, what rule do you have to use? What differentiation rule do you have to use? Um, Chain rule. So first of all, f prime of x is going to be, what's the derivative of, so you have, just so you, this is ln of ln of ln of x. So how many times do you have to use the chain rule? Three. Three times, yes. So it's going to be, what's the derivative of ln? Uh, one, over, one, over, one, one over ln lnx times the derivative in terms of x of ln lnx, right? Mm -hmm. So now, this is going to be, what's the derivative of that? It's going to be 1 over ln of lnx, right? Yeah. Times 1 over lnx times the derivative of lnx. So it's going to be 1 over ln ln x times 1 over ln x times what? 1 over x. 1 over x. All done. That's it. That's it. What would you say? Boom. Boom. Let's see. Let me see the work. Let's see. Let's see. What's it look like? Cool, huh? I like that. Anyway, so does that work? Yeah. Now here's the thing. Maddie. the one thing I'll say about the work is that you have to be really, really wicked careful about this in terms of... If you made a mistake inside here and you didn't properly notarize what you were doing, it'd be very hard for me to give you partial credit. So you see what I did here? It's not much more work. I skipped some lines and I went down instead of working over. Work down, not over, and skip and skip lines, please. Space stuff out. You're already murdering hundreds of trees. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah like, well, that, that's my theory. Is if okay. I work across, I'm safe. What does absolute value mean? It means distance away from zero. Very good. Distance away from zero. You have to break this apart into two functions. You have to break this apart into two functions. So this is going to be f of x is equal to ln of 2 minus x minus 5x squared when x is something. And it's going to be equal to ln of negative 2 minus x minus 5x squared when x is equal to something else. When do you need to make it the opposite value? When it's negative. When it's negative. So you need to know when. So what do we need to investigate? When, when this negative. is negative and when it's positive. If we know when it's positive, we'll know when it's negative, right? So you set this equal to what? Zero. Set it equal to zero. So you know that 5x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to? Zero. Do you agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. OK, so how do we solve that? You say. Does it factor nicely? It, everything factors. Does it factor nicely? No. Our definition for factoring nicely is like factoring into basic fractions at the worst, right? This would be, you could factor it, but you're going to have a radical of 41. 41 is a prime number. It doesn't even simplify very nicely at all. So what do we now know? We know that we need to use the quadratic formula. So we have x is equal to negative, and let's do this one right here. So negative 1 plus or minus the square root of what? 41 all over, all over 10. Exactly. So this quadratic, this function right here, that's a par parabola, right? Does it face up or down? Up. up. It faces up. Where, so it faces up. Where does it cross the x-axis? How many different places? Those two. 
at those two x values, yeah. right? So at those two, you have this function, right? You have negative 1 minus the square root of 41 over 10, and you have negative 1 plus the square root of 41 over 10, right? So what do we know? We know that for outside here, if we go outside of that, is, it gonna, is the function going to be positive or negative? Positive. Positive. It's going to be positive, exactly. What about inside? That would be negative. It would be? Negative. Negative, exactly, right. Because it's facing up, because the parabola is facing up. Because the leading coefficient is positive, right? Okay, so it's facing up. So what were our restrictions here? So we know that we don't have to change the sign when what? When x is greater than negative 1 plus root 41 over 10, or when what? X, x is less than negative 1 minus root 41 all over 10. 10. And this one is when x is less than negative 1 plus root 41 over 10, or greater than negative 1 minus root 41 over 10. As a side note, everybody, and that's really messy handwriting right there. I'm sorry about that. Can you read that okay? Yes. Decently? As a side note, can you write this a little differently? This is just in terms of how you write absolute yeah. value inequalities. You could if you wanted to. You don't have to, though. The point is, we now have the limit. We do have bounds there. So you just have to do the derivative separately. I know they're going to be very similar derivatives. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to so, be very yeah, similar I, I derivatives. Have a yes. Does the derivative not exist at those points? No, the derivative does exist at, at which point? Uh, those two points. Well, zeros. let's let's do these at and the zeros. at the zeros. Well, let's see what happens here. Okay. okay, so if we do this out, what is f prime going to be? F prime x is going to be. Can someone tell me what the derivative of the top is? One over two minus x minus five x squared times what? One. Negative ten x minus what? One. And what's it down here? One over negative. Minus, minus x minus 5x, 5x squared, squared times what? 10x plus 1. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. So let's clean this up just a little bit. If we clean this up a little bit, uh, you could put those in, top, in terms of the numerator. And these have the same domain restrictions right here. They have the same re question is, you asked me what happens at those x values? What happens at those x values? It goes to... Okay, hold on. This is really, really important. This function intercepts the x-axis, right? Do you agree with that? Yeah. Intercepting the x-axis means the output is zero. What happens when you do one over zero? So does the derivative exist there? Nope. No. The derivative is undefined there. Let's go back here. Can you take the natural log of a zero? Nope. No. You can't take the natural log of zero. Wh what? Give me a number that to, to any power equals zero. Is that possible? Nope. No. You can't take the natural log of zero. So this is only defined for... Those are the derivatives, and it's this derivative is not defined at those two x values. Does that make sense? Yes. It is really important that you recognize that. Absolute values, two functions. At least two functions. Actually, just two. So you took the natural log of both sides. That's fine. Correct. Uh, and then what did you do here? What is this right here? I'm I trying to think. Okay, that's correct. That's nice. That is the derivative of ln y. That's fine, right? Yeah. So... I think I understand what you did here. The power here is sine x. That's sine x right there. Yeah. What can you do with the exponent? You drop it. Drop it to the front, and then you use the power rule, right? Yeah. So that's what you did. The derivative of sine is cosine, cosine times ln x. So that's, I used the product. You used the product rule right there, and then plus the first times the derivative, derivative of the second. Okay, I'm, I'm with you so far. That's great. Okay. So then y... Oh, and then I think you just went over to the next section right here. So let's go back to your... Messy... That's fine. You just went straight to that. That's totally fine. Okay. That's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm trying to see what you did next, though. I think that's just... You just try a different method? Uh, is that a different problem? No. <laughs> Maybe. Well, you got this right here. And that seems to be okay right there. I, I go, I'll agree with that. And then just stop right there. Okay. Stop. You're all, you're all set. You're totally set. Okay. okay. We gotta look look up more often. Okay, uh, so we have he took the natural log of what'd you do here? Why you're trying to find y prime? That's a I think that's just a squiggly mark. <laughs> you took y prime, so it's one over y. Pr so what was it? It was one over y. Y prime is equal to the derivative of the other side, right? Like that. So what did he do? This right here is what. 
Wait, isn't it only one of the fly crime if it's the log? Oh, yeah. so he he didn't he just took the derivative of both sides. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. Sure, why not? I think that's totally fine. You're absolutely right. Sense. I totally miss yeah, absolutely. So you take the derivative with respect to x on both sides, and you got y prime, and the derivative there is gonna be one over x squared plus y squared. Sure. And then this is the derivative of that's d dx of x squared plus y squared. Exactly. Great. Because what's the what's the derivative? What's d dx of x of x squared? 2x and d dx of y squared is 2y y prime. Y is a function of x. It's you're differentiating with respect to x of y. Okay, so we did this. Now at this point, what does he have to do to get down to here? What's he trying to do? He's trying to isolate y, isolate y prime. So he uh, multiplied uh, both sides. He what did he do here? Oh, he cross multiplied. So that went to there, right? He then uh, subtracted that and put it on the other side, factored uh, out the y prime, yep. and he is done. Yeah. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yay. Golf clap, yeah. Is if you take a look at this, this is in your book and in your notes, you know that if f of x is ln x, then f prime of x is 1 over x. We're okay with that, right? Yeah. So what's f prime of x? f prime of 1. What's 1 over 1? 1. one. Are we okay with that? Yeah. We also know from our definition of derivative that f prime of 1 is equal to f of 1 plus h minus. All I'm doing is I'm applying the limit definition of derivative. Is that okay? Yeah. Yep. That's all I'm doing. But in this case, f of x is ln x, and we know what f prime is because we now have a definition for the derivative of natural log x. So you take the, what is f of 1? What's, what's natural log of 1? 1. No. E to what power is 1? 0. 0. E to the 0 power is 1. So this is 0. So f of 1 right here is 0. You repl uh, We replace it. We go to x goes to 0. What do we end up with here? Now here's the thing. What, did, what, what clever substitution did I do right here? All I did was, um, I'm not sure exactly why, <laughs> but instead well, of calling it h, h, does it matter? It doesn't matter. I think I might have done it because my kids at the time were really, really fixated on x, but does it matter if I call it x or a pony? No. So the point is here we have, one, okay, that ln 1 is 0. We have ln of 1 plus x. Well, that's 1 over x, right? So we have the limit of 1 over x times l. What can you do with a coefficient? Put it in front. You can bring it to the, the front. OK, so now we know that this right here, this is the important part here. This is the key to it. Let's go to this. We know that, so we're here. We're at this point right here. Are we OK with where we are right here? That's nice. What does that equal? That is f prime at what point? That's f prime of 1. So we know that this is equal to 1. The limit as x goes to 0 of ln of 1 plus x to the 1 over x is equal to 1. That doesn't seem like it matters, but it does. Bear with me for a second here. If this is correct, if this is correct as, as, as this goes to 0, another way to write this, this is in logarithmic form. What's the base right here? What's the base of ln? E. E. So e to the first is equal to? E is equal to 1 plus x yeah. to the Yeah, in the limit. So x. this is the clever thing you can do. You know that, therefore, e is equal to this. This is the clever thing you can do from there. Again, not something I'm expecting you to see, but I want you to understand the math behind it. The base of this logarithm is e. e. So e to the first is equal to this 1 plus x to the x, 1 over x power, but you have to put the limit in there because the limit is tacked onto it already. Are you okay with believing that a little bit? Is that okay? Are you decently comfortable with that? What's the point, though? The point is this. You can you, instead of saying x going to 0, you could say n is equal to 1 over x. Therefore, n is, has to go to infinity. infinity. If, n is go if x is going to 0, what's 1 over a really small number? 0. 0. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So is this a valid substitution if we wanted to do it? Yeah. Saying n is equal to 1 over x and having n go to infinity is the same thing as going x go to this. So what do we now have? e is equal to this. Does that look familiar? Does this look familiar at all? Anybody? How many people have seen that before? Anybody? Probably. I'm sure I have. <laughs> no one's seen that before? Has anybody ever dealt with compound interest? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
The more you, yeah, because I taught it to you, yes. Compound interest, the more you compound something, the more money you make, but there's a there's an upper limit to it, right? Like I can get halfway to the wall and halfway to the wall, halfway, am I ever gonna pass the wall? No. No, you can always make more money, but it's always gonna be a smaller and smaller amount. You can compound it in infinite, infinitesimally um, small, over infinitesimally small time periods, and you will make the most amount you can by compounding for a certain interest rate. What number pops up? E. e. Another definition for E is that. So do, this is our second definition for E. Here's another definition for E. 